A British leader warned that his country was heading towards a Dickens-like poverty, and a Finland leader predicted an imminent downturn in Europe. Meanwhile, the economic rating agency Moody's downgraded Italy, the Czech Republic, and Slovakia from stable to negative. What is causing such doomsday observations? Inflation is the main culprit. Due to the energy crisis, which, apart from wrecking economies, is also creating a food crisis. Former British Labour Party Prime Minister Gordon Brown called for an emergency budget. 35 million people in 13 million households, an unprecedented 49.6% of the population of the United Kingdom, face fuel poverty. There is nothing moral about indifferent leaders condemning millions of vulnerable and blameless children and pensioners to a winter of dire poverty. Britain is creating a left-out generation of young boys and girls, starting to resemble shameful scenes from a Dickens novel. A Bank of England report predicted that inflation will rise to 13% in October even as it projected Britain to enter recession from the fourth quarter of this year. Inflation in Britain started to worsen even before the Ukraine conflict, but has since aggravated due to rising energy and cost-of-living prices. Meanwhile, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals worries that rising costs will impact pets in the United Kingdom. There is concern that more pets will be abandoned. The charity is also worried that it could see a rise in the number of pets being treated with home remedies to cut costs instead of being taken to the vet. Between January and July of this year, there was an increase in pet abandonment in animal shelters by 500%. In an interview with Masudan Tulevaisus, Finnish President Soli Ninisto predicted doom. Even we in Finland are used to living with the idea that everything will get better next year. But now, this is suddenly no longer the case. We are moving in a direction where self-sufficiency in a very broad sense becomes central. It means self-sufficiency in terms of security, despite the fact that we have the NATO process in motion, and self-sufficiency so that there is enough food. Ninisto's warning came after the European Union Statistics Office announced that Eurozone inflation was around 8.9%, attributed to skyrocketing energy prices. Moody's again blamed inflation as the reason for downgrading the three sick economies. The main drivers for lowering GDP growth forecasts for the Czech Republic are soaring energy costs and uncertainty on energy supply from Russia weighing on business investments, Higher than initially expected consumer price inflation that is denting private consumption? Ongoing global supply chain frictions? And a continuous weakening of the growth outlook in Czech Republic's main trading partners, in particular Germany. Home to a large manufacturing sector, 22.2% of GDP in 2021 against 17.5% in the euro area. Slovakia's economy is hence particularly exposed to severe energy supply disruptions. An abrupt cut from Russian gas deliveries, the likelihood of which has increased over the past few months, could lead to energy rationing. Slovakia imports all of its oil and 75% of its gas from Russia, which could arrest energy-intensive industrial production and raise the risk of an economic recession. Italy is better positioned than other vulnerable European countries, thanks to its LNG terminals and pipeline linkages to North Africa, Northern Europe and Central Asia which allow Italy to use alternative gas supply sources. Although the lower reliance of Italy's industry on gas reduces the economic risks of the disruption, the use for electricity generation and by households will result in higher domestic energy prices, fueling inflation and causing a significant confidence shock. Europe has proposed a plan asking all countries to reduce gas consumption by 15%. However, Poland and Hungary have already spurned this idea citing legal issues. Earlier, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban had warned that if Europe does not resolve the energy crisis soon, the entire European Union will be pushed into an economic situation of war. Earlier, Portugal, Spain and Greece, the main economic culprits and part of the pigs grouping, have already refused to comply with this diktat from Belgium. They argued that since there are no pan-European gas pipelines, they cannot share their gas stocks with other European countries. Russian gas flows to the European Union have been declining for months. Initially, gas transit via Ukraine dropped by 60% in May, after Kyiv blocked one of the two transit stations delivering gas from Russia to the EU. The next blow came when Canada cited sanctions and refused to return a turbine to Russian gas major Gazprom. 
Canada was to service the turbine. The third shock happened 9th August when Ukraine's state oil pipeline operator Ukrtrans Nafta cited limitations of EU sanctions and stopped pumping Russian crude through the southern branch of the Druzhba system to the EU. Transit supplies have been halted to Hungary, the Czech Republic and Slovakia. However, the transit through Belarus in the direction of Poland and Germany will continue. Seeing Europe spiraling into an economic crash, Japan Trade and Industry Minister Koichi Hayuda said that his country will not exit Russian energy projects. For Japan, which depends on the Middle East for about 90% of its crude oil imports, Sakhalin 1 is a valuable source of purchases outside the Middle East. Russian President Vladimir Putin decreed in early August that foreign shareholders in strategically critical Russian companies from unfriendly states, meaning those that placed sanctions on Russia, are prohibited until the end of this year. Japanese energy company Sodeco owns a 30% stake in Sakhalin 1, India's ONGC 20%, and Russia's Rosneft 20%. U.S.-based ExxonMobil, which till recently been the project operator with a 30% stake, announced its intention to quit in early March. Since Exxon's exit, production has dropped from 220,000 barrels per day to 10,000. While Japan followed the United States in imposing some sanctions, they have been reluctant to jeopardize its energy security. Japanese authorities have encouraged Mitsubishi and Mitsui conglomerates not to divest their shares in Russia's Sakhalin to liquefied natural gas project after its transfer to a Russian operator. Western economists, like former Wall Street financier Michael Hudson, told the German news outlet Uinga Welt that the Western economic sanctions are backfiring on Western economies. The West sanctions are great for Russia. Any country threatened by US sanctions is forced to become self sufficient. Instead of importing German cars, Russia is turning to China to develop its own automotive industry. Russia is now moving very quickly to replace its dependence on the West for manufactured goods with its own domestic production. The only things they can't produce are Walt Disney movies and Italian handbags. Russia is the big beneficiary of Germany's energy embargo plans. The less gas Russia sells, the more money it makes. Hudson insinuated that Washington was the biggest beneficiary of the sanctions on Russia. Basically, Washington doesn't care if Russia wins the war in Ukraine, because the US has succeeded in eliminating its competition in Europe, especially Germany. In a globalized world, recession in any part of the world affects every other. However, the challenges we see with this environment are more basic. It is not about profits and margins, it is much more fundamental. It is about energy and food. If you like this content, please press the like button and share it with your family and friends. Please consider subscribing to this channel. It is free. Press the bell icon to receive notifications about new content.